Hey folks, Jerry Stevenson, Chief Redneck in Charge at The Redneck Barbecue Lab, McGee's Crossroad in Benson, North Carolina. Here in the RBL studios today to show you guys how to make Eastern North Carolina Brunswick stew at home, just like I do at the lab. Before we get started on that, I'd like for you folks to go down on this video right now and like it, please. Subscribe to our YouTube channel here if you're not already subscribers. We appreciate you coming on here and being members of this. Uh, it's basically a free give back to you guys. We're doing this for y'all, we're not doing this for me. I hate getting in public, I hate talking, but we're trying to do this for you folks just to be able to get together to make something for a family or make something as a family for friends, for relatives, someone who needs it, you know? Be able to make something like this, take somebody who needs it, awesome. Also, please go on here and share this with your friends. We are trying to build this up as big as we can. We're trying to spread this gospel of barbecue one little plate at a time, and these videos allow us to do that. And above all, if you only do one thing on this video, please leave us your comments as to what you thought about this video and suggestions as to what you would like to see us do in the future in terms of protein, size, desserts, or whatever, because this video here today is based on one of those suggestions that we got from one of our viewers, one of our friends, firefighter guy that's a friend of ours named Ashley Wheeler said, hey, I'd like to see how you guys make Brunswick stew at home like you do at the lab. So we said, okay, cool, and I talked to him, but like I said, talking to someone and telling them what to do, oftentimes it's a lot easier to show you guys what we do by doing something like this. So after all of that, basically, we're here today because a viewer said, hey, we'd like to see you do Brunswick stew. That's what I was getting at. So anyway, let's hop into this recipe and, and, and talk about Brunswick stew a little bit. Um, in North Carolina, there's battles that we have with stuff. It's barbecue, basketball, football, and another one is Brunswick stew. Brunswick stew, there's, there's no one right recipe. There's not one way to do it, but it's a accumulation of a lot of different things that you enjoy put into a pot and slow cooked to create something that comes together in a dish that can be a main dish, it can be a side dish. You know what, man? It could be whatever you want. And that's what's important about this. There's no right or wrong ways. So this Brunswick stew that we're creating today is an Eastern North Carolina Brunswick stew because we use one ingredient in it that I think makes it an Eastern North Carolina Brunswick stew versus just a regular Brunswick stew. So let's jump into it. First thing that you need, and it's not necessary, Brunswick stew does not have to have a protein. I know a lot of you folks are like, oh my gosh, you have to have, you have to have a meat or protein in Brunswick stew. You don't, you can make this vegetarian. You can make this any way you like. The important thing is, is just bringing this thing together, uh, putting it together, putting it onto a smoker or using smoke products to make it like what we're doing today. That can be Brunswick stew. That's my opinion, something we can argue about later. But let's hop into it. Let's talk ingredients first. Today, the two proteins that we are going to use to make this Brunswick stew, um, traditionally in North Carolina, um, folks use pork. We like to use brisket um, trimmings. It's basically the trimmings off of burn ends, uh, side pieces that fall off, the drier bits that we don't like to serve to our customers at the lab. We keep that. Um, from the day we grind it and we throw it into the stew and the next morning it caramel, um, caramelizes. It's got all the flavor, the savory parts from the smoke and the rub and stuff, but it's also got a lot of the collagen and the juices that come together that go into this that we have to put in the stew. So it's something we chop up. So we're going to start putting this in and start assembling this. So first thing we start out with is we start out with cutting on our induction smoker that I'm just learning about. So just... I'm getting better about it. At least I know how to cut it on nowadays. Um, we're gonna start out with about this. I, I've got about two and a half pounds. You can always add more. Um, you can always add less if you want to, but I'm gonna start out with about a pound of ground uh, Brunswick, or uh, uh, sorry about that, <laughs> beef brisket. About to say beef Brunswick. Along with that, I am putting in another pound of smoked, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You can use pork, you can use straight chicken, you can use straight beef, you can use whatever you want to, but like I said, 
This stew basically is what you guys want it to be. I'm just giving you the way that I like it. So with that being said, we go ahead and put this into our uh, induction pot. Uh, this meat's already cooked. So it's parts and pieces that we had left over from prior service at the lab that I kept, um, that we keep and we'll put it in the Brunswick stew for the next morning. To that, we are going to add 32 ounces of crushed tomatoes. Um, they can be uh, just regular old tomatoes on the shelf, or if you really want to make it something special, it could be something like my mom right now is canning tomatoes at home. Uh, August is a big, August and July is a big canning event here in uh, North Carolina for a lot of folks, um, my mother included. Uh, we had a conversation about this just yesterday. She has to go get her tomatoes to can because my mother, father doesn't uh, grow the garden like we used to. Um, we're adding one cup of ketchup to this. Um, why not just use straight up tomato sauce? You can, you don't have to use ketchup. If you're one of these folks that do not like the high fructose syrup and all that stuff, that's perfectly fine. I mean, you put into it what you want. Um, I, I like just adding this combination, 16 ounces of ketchup, 32 ounces of uh, tomato sauce, and that kind of creates my base for this uh, stew that we're getting ready to create right here. The next part that we're gonna put in, this already smells good by the way, it's like that tomato sweet, acidy tomato hits that smoky Brunswick stew or a, a brisket and chicken. Um, that's something right there that, you know, that could possibly be made into a dish later on. Keep, keep your eyes posted for that. The next part of our Brunswick stew is, is the vegetable, the veg, as a lot of people like to say. The veg that I like uh, putting into mine is this, and you guys don't. I like putting in, this is uh, called veg all. Some of my mother turned me on to uh, a long time ago. It's something that she could use to make something like pot pies and stuff with rather quickly. It's basically peas, carrots, corn, and uh, potatoes with little green beans mixed in. I put 32 ounces of that into this pot of uh, Brunswick stew. Along with that, I add more um, Potatoes, uh, the potatoes serve a couple purposes. One, uh, I love potatoes, but two, they give off a little bit of starch. Now these, these are drained. I did drain all these vegetables because I don't like the juice and stuff that's inside them. I drain them, I'd rather add my juice to it than what's in this canned juice. So um, that's what, what you'll see is uh, drained vegetables in here. Give this a quick stir and kind of get it together. You know, we always talk about it, and it is the, it's the honest to goodness gospel is, is that this um, smell that comes off the food you're cooking in here, you guys, it's just such a disservice. You, you've got to do this just to be able to do this at home so you get these aromas of all this stuff already coming together and meshing together, smoky, sweet, and everything. Um, I like to add to this, and, and this, this is where you could stop if you wanted to. Um, at the lab, this is where we do stop, but at home, I like to add a bit more sweet corn to it. Um, if you have fresh, fresh is obviously better than canned. I'm using what I have today. I don't have time to do the garden anymore. I wish I did. And if I had fresh, fresh uh, vegetables, this is where I would use them, especially if I had bits and pieces left over. You cooked something the night before, had a little bit left instead of throwing them away or feeding them like we do to the chickens, cats, dogs outside. You could throw those into the refrigerator into a bag, you know, a Ziploc bag or something. Just keep a lot of these small little bits of vegetables together to make this later on or vegetable soup. The uh, make or break ingredient to me in a, Br a Brunswick stew probably would cause more friction with people than anything is lima beans. I love lima beans. These specifically are butter beans. Um, butter beans are. Uh, one of my favorite things in the world to eat. Um, the reaction that, that, that one gets from, from these sometimes is kind of bad. I, I love them. I absolutely love them. And the other thing about these, bruns, these uh, butter beans um, or lima beans, wherever you're from, we call them different names. They add another starch component. As they start breaking down, it'll, sell, it'll help kind of thicken this stew up. Um, that was one of the questions Mr. Wheeler had to me was, was about how we thickened our stew. And I'm going to get to that. I'll get to that a little bit later. But um, you guys can already see this is kind of coming together. 
Um, it's, it's a little thicker than, than you want right now. You could stop right here, but I, we thin it out. At the lab, we thin it out. Um, a lot of our cooking that we do is we cook the site, um, meaning that we put X amount of water in it and keep that water there to kind of keep everything happy and stuff. And this is how I cook the site here. I've got some chicken stock that I'm gonna start out with. Um, just got a quart. And basically what I wanna do with this is, I'm gonna add 16 ounces of that, is just kind of loosen this up so it won't stick to the bottom. The pot that I'm using, this is a Lodge cast iron pot. It's the enamel coated one. I absolutely love these. Um, I've always cooked with Dutch ovens and cast iron all my life, but I'm falling in love with these. They are easily to clean. Um, it just seems like I don't burn as much stuff, you know, as much stuff sticks. I don't have to use as much uh, oil or fat, you know, to keep stuff from sticking in this. And I don't know, I just think that red color is cool. You know, red, redneck, red, red, redneck. <laughs> All right, let's talk spice. Um, kind of Jerry's Trinity when it comes to spices. Everybody's got the Trinity. New Orleans has got theirs, the bell pepper, celery, onion, onion. Uh, Jerry's got his. The basis of pretty much everything I cook is salt and pepper and garlic. Um, and then the, the onion component I love as well, but really my trinity is this right here, this salt. Uh, I use, this is diamond. I'm a, I'm a salt snob, I'll go ahead and say it. I use diamond crystal kosher salt. I absolutely love this stuff. It's just the flake, it tastes good. There is a difference in your salt. If you are using table salt, which is fine, make sure you use less table salt than this kosher salt. I am going to go ahead and add, I usually don't, but I won't the salt in there to make the butter beans start to weep some of that starch out to tighten this up, as well as the, uh, the potatoes. I usually season with salt at the end, but I'm gonna go ahead and put in a tablespoon of salt to this. Um, the other thing is, is my vegetables, make sure when you purchase canned vegetables, sometimes I'll sneak that sodium in in there as kind of a preservative and to add something that keeps the moisture in that vegetable together. Be careful because if you don't, you know, if, if they're, they're salted already, and you have more salt to it, you can't take it out. We can always put more in. So that's why I reserve this to the end when we come to our taste test. Now, one of the things you guys know is I love pepper. I am going to put in a big fat tablespoon of pepper into this. I advise you probably just put in a teaspoon. Um, I love pepper. I'll probably taste this and end up putting in more as we cook. Uh, when this cooks down, and gets more concentrated, uh, that's when you know what you need uh, here and there. Next thing that I will put into this is, is I am once again, I've got a tablespoon here in my cup. This is the way I cook at home. Um, and this is what I like to do is, is I'm gonna add half of this right now. So a half a tablespoon of granulated garlic. Uh, I like granulated, it seems like it doesn't clump together, doesn't break down as quick. Um, the flavor of it, it seems like, it reminds me like it's what's on pizza a lot of times, that granulated garlic, uh, pizza sauce, and I just love it better than powder. Don't ask me why. I mean, I just, I just say because it breaks down slower. So now that we got our Trinity in there, then we're going to hit you with why this, why is this Eastern North Carolina barbecue sauce? Why is this not Brunswick County, Georgia, where they claim it came from? or Brunswick, Georgia, where they also claim that this recipe came from. Um, this is Eastern North Carolina barbecue salt, or barbecue, or Eastern North Carolina Brunswick stew because I like vinegar and red pepper in it. And what better else way to be able to get that vinegar and that red pepper than the Redneck Barbecue Lab, you know, North Carolina pork sauce. Um, it's got my vinegar, it's got my red pepper, that little extra kick, that cayenne flavor that I, I really love on all my food. Um, I'm gonna add probably about a half a cup to, of barbecue sauce, that North Carolina barbecue sauce to this. I advise you guys and ladies at home, I can drink this. A lot of people can't stand this because they hate vinegar. These are my people I talk to that will put ketchup on something in a heartbeat, but they hate vinegar, people. You know I'm talking to you. Y'all know the vinegar basically is, vinegar and sugar is the base for ketchup. Hate to tell y'all that, but vinegar and sugar and tomatoes make ketchup. So add about probably a half a cup of uh, that uh, North Carolina 
uh, pork sauce, Redneck Barbecue Lab pork sauce. And uh, if you can't find, you, you should be able to find it. It's We're now on the shelves in a lot of the major grocery stores and stuff, but if you guys cannot find this sauce, go down here to our website, www.theredneckbarbecuelab.com slash find our sauce. Enter your zip code, search radius, press that search button, and it will tell you where our sauces are at with our local purveyors. Additionally on there, there are some purveyors that are currently shipping uh, out to people who aren't regionally around here. So you can go on there to find them, as well as uh, we do have um, a company on Amazon selling our sauces and rubs. Check on Amazon, you can probably find it there too. Slip you guys a little bit of uh, what's going on in the future for the Redneck Barbecue Lab. Um, we've got uh, our rubs and sauces are coming in to Lowe's Foods. Uh, they'll be in the Food Lions. And then rumor has it, which is not really a rumor, we're working out the kinks and everything. There is going to be an online store where you'll be able to go to our website down here and purchase directly from us. Not only sauces and rubs, not only the cornbread mix, but you'll be able to purchase t-shirts, hats, and all the other stuff we get phone calls on. So, it's looking pretty good right now. But this is something that we're going to put up. Um, we, we can put this into the smoker. If you guys didn't have smoked meat, like say you're doing the vegetarian option, and, and this is where I'll come to your fence for all my vegetarians and my vegans out there, leave the meat out of it, put the veg in here, put the tomatoes and stuff, put this in the smoker. It's Brunswick stew in my opinion. You put it in the smoker, you smoke it, trust me, you're gonna get that smoke flavor on it. We don't need to put this into the smoker, we could, but we're just gonna put this in the oven because I've got that smoked brisket, that leftover smoked brisket, and that leftover chicken in there. We're going to put that into um, the oven and let it cook while the oven the oven is uh, like, like a smoker, it's very even cooking. It cooks on the outside like this, whereas this burner is from the bottom and you can burn it. Um, I'm just gonna throw this into the oven and, and basically let it come together. I'm gonna throw it into a 300 degree oven. I'm gonna leave it in there for about an hour to come together and I'm gonna pull it out and then check the consistency of it. I'll have the lid on it um, for that one hour and I'm gonna take it off. And at that point, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna check the consistency. If it looks like it's too dry, at that point, I'm gonna add a bit more liquid um, to raise it up. If it's still too liquidy, one of the things, and this is the pro tip that I shared with Mr. Wheeler about what I do to tighten it up, what we do in the lab to tighten it up, because we really don't know how much juice is gonna leach out of these vegetables or anything, but we don't skim off and dump any of this good stuff out that we're creating. We'll just basically tighten it up. And tighten it up means sometimes this is creating a roux you know, out of flour and oil, um, using cornstarch to tighten something up. Cornstarch is a, is a thickener. Um, your your, your uh, feely, your feely, basically ground sassafras root is a thickener, like with your gumbos. Um, what Jerry likes to use and what the lab likes to use, because Jerry likes to use is, is this is our thickener. Redneck Barbecue Lab Cornbread Mix. This is um, my go-to and sauces and a lot of times it just gives me a background. I like to use it for a thickener. Uh, it's a little sweet, it's a little nutty. It's got that corn, you know, sweetness and nuttiness to it. Um, it as well as some other ingredients in there that kind of help not only season it, but it will thicken up my, my stews and my sauces. And uh, I'll probably throw a little bit in there to tighten it up. But right now we brought this up to a boil. There's that boil I was looking for. No sticking cause it's an enamel pot. Now it's time for us to go ahead and put on this lid, heavy duty lid, and get this into the oven. 300 degrees, one hour, we're gonna pull it out, take a look at it, show you folks what we got. We'll taste it, see if it needs this mixture of this Trinity in there seasoning wise, adjust it, thicken it up if we need to with that Redneck Barbecue Lab cornbread mix and then get a bowl and hopefully eat some. So we'll see you guys in about an hour. All right, we're back. Uh, we let this Brunswick stew in the oven at 300 degrees for about an hour. Uh, let's see what we've got. Oh yeah. I could smell it before I open the lid. I don't even lie to you guys. You smell that smoky, tomatoey, 
smell that we always uh, perceive with Brunswick stew. I can smell a little bit of vinegar. There's a little bit of vinegar and astringency in the background. Mm, that was a little smoky. It's like I said, that comes from that chopped brisket and that chicken in there. So let's just kind of recap what we did uh, to get to this point right here. Uh, we started out with uh, about a pound of chopped beef brisket on with a, a pound of chopped boneless skinless chicken thighs. To that, we added a couple um, uh, cans. I think there were 12 ounce cans of veg all, something my mother taught me as an early kid, like how to kind of cheat. You can do fresh vegetables. Veg all is just basically peas, carrots, uh, potatoes, green beans, it's just kind of a mixture of stuff in there. We added two cans of that, two cans of diced, already pre cooked potatoes, along with some corn and uh, lima beans, which I like, uh, 32 ounces of tomato sauce, crushed tomatoes, sorry, crushed tomatoes, check that, crushed tomatoes as well as one cup of ketchup to this to create a base. We added in some chicken broth for flavor um, and to kind of uh, thin this out a little bit. Uh, a half a cup of the Redneck Barbecue Lab uh, North Carolina pork sauce. It needs need some acidity in there as well as a little bit of heat. And this has got both, it's got some vinegar, it's got some heat um, as well as some other spices that kind of combine in the background to uh, make this uh, kind of a unique flavor with our Brunswick stew that we do at the lab and the Brunswick stew I do at home. Um, this product you can find, like I said before, at the redneckbarbecuelab.com. Find our sauce, put your zip code in, search uh, parameter, hit that button, that search button, it'll tell you where the stores are. If there's not one nearby to you, there's several purveyors that actually uh, uh, ship this stuff, so they're on there as well. So, um, let me show you guys like how how I uh, how I eat this. Let's see how I did. Number one, um, I wait to salt this until later. Remember, we added just a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper in there. But I always something about it. I always like to just put just a little bit of that uh, North Carolina barbecue sauce on top of it. Just kind of a drizzle right on top of it, right in the center. I don't know, it's just, just goes back to my roots. My roots, I mean, I think I'm consisted of bone, skin, apple cider vinegar, salt, and pepper. You know, I think that kind of makes my blood up, um, our blood content. Maybe that's the way you check for, to see if you're truly from Eastern North Carolina, that and your affinity for oysters, um, which I, I love oysters. So let's see how we did. Man, it's good. That's really good. Um, one of the things I may do if I was testing this on the stove is I may put this back on the stove and add in a little bit of that Redneck Barbecue Lab cornbread mix. When I first tasted this, I thought that it didn't need this cornbread mix in it. Remember I talked about how I'll put a little bit, sprinkle this in and mix it into this for a little bit of sweetener and to tighten this up. This is a little bit uh, loose and that this would tighten it up a bit, this, this uh, cornbread mix. And you can find it, like I said before, where you can find our sauces, you can find this as well at the same place. That's about the only thing that would make it better. But I tell you what, if I had a piece of this cooked right now to go with this, to sop that juice up, that would be a bit good backup plan there. So there you have it, Mr. Ashley Wheeler. That cornbread mix will tighten it up, but you know you can always make some cornbread to dip in there to take care of that excess juice that was too loose. That is a pro professional tip right here from yours truly. But like I said, I, th this could be a meal in itself. This could be a side dish in North Carolina. We have people come in, this is their meal at night and this is the dish that goes along with chopped pork, beef brisket, chopped chicken, like what we do at the lab. Mm. Mm -mm. Try to get one more bite. You know what I'm eating for lunch today. <laughs> Anyway, folks, hate to be a glutton on here and eat, eat in front of y'all and everything. So why don't you guys go and make this yourselves tonight for dinner? A surprise, like I said, surprise your family, your significant others, your spouse. Share this meal with someone. Share some love. Share some of that barbecue love. Pass some smiles around. Best way in the world to do that is using this food. So once again, folks, this is Eastern. This is the Redneck Barbecue Lab's take on Eastern North Carolina Brunswick stew. This is how we do it at the lab. This is how we do it at the house. Hopefully you guys will do it at home. 
So, I'm Jerry Stevenson, Chief Redneck in Charge at TheBarbecueLab.com. The Barbecue Lab, McGee's Crossroad, Benson, North Carolina. I say that too much. You can find our rubs and salsas at TheBarbecueLab.com. Find our salsas and rubs. Once again, like this video, please subscribe to this channel. If you're not already doing it, please, please, please do that for us. Share this video with your friends. Get them cooking. Get them together. Heck, make some of this. Take them to them. Say, here, I made this for you. When they said, where did you learn it? Then you can tell them to come to this YouTube channel and find this video. Comments, suggestions are appreciated and love. We like to hear back from you guys, even if it's a tip on something I could do better or something the way you do it, or maybe your grandmother or grandfather did it. Um, I know my friend Mike Baker over here with Event Webcasting, who puts on this, the magic right here. Mike was sharing with me how his father, you know, just brings home those memories, the big pot he had and the whole chickens. I mean, this is a process. This is something that's carefully guarded in places in Virginia, North Carolina and Georgia. But this is how we do it at the lab. We want you guys to do it at home. So until next time, y'all, please be kind to one another. Be patient. Smile a lot. Let's bring that positivity up. Bring that ne negativity down. Let's just squash it. You know what I mean? Let's get rid of it. We don't need it. So until we we'll see you guys again here at the Redneck Barbecue Lab, see y'all guys out there on the competition trail, or I just see you in the RBL studio sometime. Love y'all. Take care. Yeah.